Reading. Reading time. 3 minutes. The question of how the ancient Egyptians built the pyramids has long baffled historians and archaeologists. Each pyramid is comprised of massive stone blocks. In some cases, a single pyramid may contain millions of them. Yet the Egyptians somehow managed to move and hold these blocks in place without modern equipment. The answer to how they accomplished this feat seems to lie in three aspects of engineering. Rams, cranes, and concrete. First, the Egyptians employed earthen ramps around the pyramids to move the stones to higher levels. As construction proceeded, the rams were built higher. Each block was rolled on logs or dragged up by teams of men and animals. Then, the blocks were pushed into place. The Egyptians used either a single long, high ramp built on one side or a series of shorter ramps on both sides that wound their way to the top. Second, the Egyptians used cranes with ropes and pulleys to move some stones into hard-to-reach positions. These devices were made of wood and used leather straps to hold the blocks. Then, workers pulled on long ropes to lift and subsequently lower the blocks into place. The usage of cranes explains how the Egyptians could lift enormous stone blocks some weighing as much as 60 tons into place in some internal chambers. Finally, it is likely that the Egyptians possessed some form of concrete made of limestone and other materials. The concrete was used to fill the spaces between the blocks. This strengthened the overall structure and permitted the pyramids to be built to great heights. Without the use of concrete, it is likely that the pyramids would have collapsed upon themselves due to their enormous weight. Now listen to part of a lecture on the topic you just read about. The Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt is estimated to be made of 2 million stone blocks, some of which weigh several tons. Okay, I know what you're thinking. You want to know how people in a society with limited technology moved those stones and put them into place while building the pyramids. Well, there are lots of theories, but none so far seem satisfactory. One of the most accepted theories is that the Egyptians built ramps that let them push or pull the stones into place. It sounds plausible, yet there's no evidence for ramps ever existing in Egypt. In addition, many experts believe the pyramids were too tall for ramps. For instance, the Great Pyramid of Giza stood 146 meters high. The ramps would have been so heavy that they would have fallen down before they ever reached anywhere near that height. Once the blocks got onto the pyramids, however that happened, we're now faced with the question of how they were moved into the correct positions. One theory is that cranes moved them, yet there's no record anywhere of the Egyptians having built cranes, nor have any cranes ever been found in Egypt. Finally, the cranes would have been made of wood, which was scarce in Egypt during the time the pyramids were built. Some have claimed that the Egyptians used concrete to fill in the gaps between the stones. While some evidence of concrete has been found, the Egyptians had no knowledge of how to make it. The Romans, however, were using concrete by the 1st century BC. In all likelihood, the Romans, who occupied Egypt during their history, tried to repair the pyramids with concrete. So it wasn't the Egyptians using concrete, but people who came centuries after them who utilized it instead. Directions. You have 20 minutes to plan and write your response. Your response will be judged on the quality of your writing and on how well you present the points in the lecture and their relationship to the reading passage. An effective response will typically be 150 to 225 words. Question. Summarize the points made in the lecture you just heard explaining how they cast doubt on the points made in the reading passage. Response time, 20 minutes. Simple summary. The lecturer argues that none of the theories concerning the Great Pyramid of Giza seems reliable. This assertion directly refutes the reading passage's claim that the Egyptians could move and hold stone blocks in place successfully by using three aspects of engineering. First, the use of ramps in the construction of the pyramids cannot be proven. According to the lecturer, 
it would have been impossible to build ramps since the pyramids were so high. A ramp tall enough to reach the top of the Great Pyramid would have collapsed under its own weight. This contradicts the reading passages claim that Egyptians could carry stone blocks to higher places with the use of earthen ramps. On top of that, the lecturer contends that another theory concerning the use of cranes is also unrealistic. Neither any actual cranes nor any record of their use have been found in Egypt. Furthermore, wood, which would have been used for making cranes, was scarce in the time when the pyramids were built. This casts doubt on the reading passages claim that cranes allowed the Egyptians to lift huge stone blocks. Finally, though concrete has been found, the people who actually used it were different from those who were known for using it. It has been verified that the Egyptians had no knowledge of the use of concrete. Since the Romans had control over Egypt, they probably used concrete to fix the pyramids. This goes against the idea presented in the reading passage that concrete was used by the Egyptians to fill in the cracks of the pyramids and that it allowed the Egyptians to construct pyramids at greater heights.